Hey guys, it is Tuesday night. It's been a really long week so far, even though it's been two days. Probably because my kids have been at home both days with me, so it's been kind of stressful, loud, and crazy. But um, I thrive on chaos, apparently. I'm also super sore and um, exhausted in general. Um, so sometimes just sitting in silence is very um, relaxing for me. Um, I'm sure you can hear my loud Boston Terrier sleeping on my lap. Both of them are laying on me right now because they love evening cuddles. Um, so yesterday my son tried to tell me that he wanted to quit playing violin and I am not going to lie, I was kind of upset because before violin he had played piano and I just wanted him to find something that he loved doing and he had told me he didn't want to do swim team this year, which he had tried year round but there was so much going on because he's in fifth grade. So. I was like, okay, that's good because, you know, you need a break from swimming. Um, this, the summer swim team is perfect, but we don't want to burn you out on swimming. So he told me he didn't want to do it this year. So when violin came, lessons came around yesterday, he told me he didn't want to do it anymore. And I said, well, you're going to go to this lesson today because we can't cancel. So he went, he took the lesson, and when I was sitting there in the waiting room hearing him, he was playing really good. And... He'd only been playing violin, like, literally maybe since summertime, I want to say. Not for that long, or maybe the beginning of the school year. And he knows three songs on the violin. And he had told me his shoulder hurt, and that was why he wanted to stop playing. So when his instructor came out, I asked, I was like, did he tell you he wanted to stop playing? And his instructor was like, no. Um, he's doing really well. I, I'd hate for him to stop. And I was like, me too. And so he recommended the shoulder rest and my son's going to give it a try again. But ultimately, I really wanted him to like what he was doing. And he said he liked the violin. It just his shoulder hurt. So I'm hoping this Everest um, violin rest will really help him. Because he's really like a passionate person. He likes every, he goes all in on whatever he does, but he's like, he just likes to try new things and switch it up often. And I just want him to stick with one thing and really fall in love with it. I mean, he's in Boy Scouts too, so he's stuck with that. Well, Cub Scouts, I'm gonna be a Boy Scout. But I just really wanna be like consistent with showing him that he has to stick it out. Um, and if there's one thing I know about Eric, he's very determined. So if he wants something, he'll he'll put his effort into it and really try. Um, so I'm really hoping this works. Um, I'm praying it works because the violin is a very beautiful instrument and I'm really impressed with his skills so far. There are times in your life where it's not necessarily easy. It gets boring, it gets monotonous, it gets hard, it gets challenging. And sometimes it's not as fun as you anticipate. But if you push through, it can be more than just that it can be something truly amazing and i wanted to share with that with him i told him today about that i said if you give up now it's not going to be as rewarding you can't give up and start and start something new all the time you have to stick with it and this applies to anyone in real life because so many times we get caught up with something that we don't ever see through like for me it's reading books i started reading this book literally <laughs> um a i want to say like a couple months ago i only got to like the third tra chapter because i'm terrible at reading or making time for it because every time i open a book at night i feel like i'm gonna fall asleep so for me it's about staying consistent with reading and being persistent with whatever hobby i have and right now my hobby is definitely um, playing the drums and getting into jewelry making again. Um, I found there's some classes in Asheville that I want to take, so um, I'm really looking forward to signing up for those. I'm also going hiking in a few months in Arizona, so that should be fun. Um, but I also am very passionate about making sure that those I love and those that I'm friends with are really consistent with um, doing what they love and finding 
uh, passion. Um, if you really, really like something, just stick with it because it's not going to be easy all the time. It's not going to be something fun for you all the time, but you can create that happiness and find that fun with whatever you're doing. You just have to find it through persistence and being consistent with your practice. And this applies to anything in life. When I first started yoga, I was not perfect. I was not 100% amazing at it. And I kept up with it. And now I can do headstands. I teach yoga. And I'm just very into it. But sure, there were times when I did yoga and I didn't even know all the moves. And I was just starting out. In fact, my first introduction to yoga was Pio on um, Beachbody. And I remember, remember first taking my first class at... Um, a lifetime fitness and thinking it was a surrender class thinking it was so different from what I learned and then realizing what it was truly about um, so don't let that person give up or don't let that um, your kids give up in life because or give up on whatever hobby they have going on because it's so easy to give in and give up but teach them that it's important to be or stick with it because you can't always give up and I mean obviously if they aren't super loving it but if you know in your heart of hearts that they love what they're doing then don't let them give in um, and I think that's one thing that I have a strong like one of my strengths is that I'm very like determined to make stuff work sometimes which my son gets for me as well um, and um, so tonight since I was so stressed out and so exhausted I'm a little crazy, I know, but I've done this before, so I decided to color my hair, and I wanted to do a balayage, but this time I did it a little different than I did in the past. In the past, I would use an aluminum foil, and I would take sections and foil them off, start from the bottom to the top. This time, I was like, you know what, I saw a few videos, one of them was Brad Mondo's, and he said in the video that you don't need to put plastic over it or the um, aluminum foil. You can just let it, let it air dry. So, I mean, it worked out good till it didn't work out. So, let me preface this by saying I had already highlighted hair. It was very, like, beigey blonde and it was very grown out. So, <laughs> this is how it happened. Um, I did the bottom half. It looked amazing. And then I did the top half. So obviously my hair is very dense. I have lots of hair. So when I was doing it, <laughs> it was time to obviously take it out. I could tell for the bottom half. And I had thought this is such a novice mistake. I should have known because I've colored my hair a million times and bleached it, highlighted it, you name it. So I had thought that the top, it was time too. And I looked and I, and I was like, oh yeah, it's, t it's time. I literally washed my hair and it was literally like super orange at the top. And so I was like, I, I can't even function like this. This is very like not functional. So because my hair was wet and I didn't properly section it off to re go in just at the roots on the top section where the parts are, I, um, <laughs> I just like went over those and I obviously over bleached it. Um, not that it was like a white bleach, but not that it was like a bleach blonde, but that I put too much so there was no dimension left at the top. So now it's like a um, strawberry strawberry blonde on top and um, all the dimension on the bottom is perfect in the back of my head, but in the front, because I went over, like this is also another mistake I made. I, I like lifted my hair back, pulled it back, and I just like painted some like baby lights. But I should have put a bag over my head or do the aluminum foil thing like I always do. But instead, my dumbass is like, oh, I'm just going to like do it a different way this time because, you know, I watched some videos. Well, it did not process, of course. I mean, it at first, I like kind of freaked out when I saw it because I was like, oh my god, it's literally a, um, it's literally orange. But, I mean, it's a strawberry, strawberry blonde, and it'll grow, and my hair grows really fast. I mean, I thought about getting a um, color depositing conditioner and going in and adding some um, darkness to the roots so there's more dimension, but I might just let it grow in a little bit because, I mean, it's not super bad, but 
I should have known my novice mistake and not let that happen and maybe kept it in a little longer and just washed out the bottom part, but at least I didn't totally fry my hair. I also did the butterfly layer cut and I did um, the like twist and pull um, side bangs. I would let my hair down now to show it, but it honest, honestly is kind of like a frizzy mess right now because um, I played around with it too much. So, But anyways, more of the story, go with what you know works. Um, I probably would have even been better using a cap, but I didn't want the gap between the cap and my roots. And my hair is like a, I want to say light brown, dark blonde, more probably of a light brown color. Depends what you're looking at. Um, so yeah, that was exciting. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure if you're like me, you like to experiment with your hair if you are like stressed out or going through something crazy. Um, right. But at least my haircut came out good. So that's one plus. But yeah. Well, anyways, that was my Tuesday night. Um, so if you're watching this, thanks for sticking through the whole thing. And hopefully I'll be on here soon with some yoga and can show you some video maybe of my hair. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you guys again. 